Ooh, buttons. Love it, eh? He's on. Oh! Nice, oh, it's got power. Welcome back guys to Soto Advice, the channel that makes energy solutions simplified. It's great to see you and today we're going to be going through lithium ion batteries and more specifically what to understand when buying one. So those who aren't familiar with lithium ion batteries, they're the latest technology in solar applications. They've pretty much uh, replaced the old clunky lead acid batteries that you used to have. With that being said, some of the benefits are that they are longer lasting, they're safer, they're quite compact, and there are other benefits as well, which I'll go through today. Right, so let's break down the typical spec of one of these batteries. Now, depending on the design of the battery that you're choosing, uh, depends on the connections and where they are. So as you can see with the wall mounted option, the, the connections are either on the top or they'll be at the bottom. Uh, with the rack mounted, you can see that almost always they're on the front. And as you can see, you've got a, a nice interface with this particular one. But the other ones, you don't tend to have that feature. So that being said, let's go through what you have as the connections. So on the example that we have here, you can see the, the positive and the negative connections for the power source. Uh, you can also see there's a nice on off switch, which oh, it's so great to click. Uh, you can see the indicator here as well to see, let's actually turn this on. You can see the indicator here telling you how much uh, power you have in your battery. And this particular version, like I said, has a nice display so you can see all the stats and things like that on there. You also sometimes have some options here for menu and so on. And this, is, this pertains more to the actual uh, display. And then you've got your CAN cable, which is your communications, which we'll talk about later, uh, to your inverter. And you've also got these small settings as well. Um, so that's specifically for when you want to parallel your battery. So the one thing that you'll get with uh, lithium ion batteries such as these, and I'm talking specifically when they look like this because you also get the ones that look like car batteries, they should have a thing called a BMS. That stands for Battery Management System. Uh, this handy little onboard computer uh, monitors the battery It makes sure that you don't overcharge the battery and the charge. It also, also monitors the state of charge um, so that when you're connected to your inverter, it knows how much is left in your battery. Now we've covered a little bit about the basics and you can see what a typical lithium ion battery looks like. So let's dig a little deeper into the tech of this battery. When comparing the different options that are available on the market, it's really important to understand the specs. Now, if you don't understand the specs, you might be buying something and it might not be what you thought it was. Okay, first one we're gonna go over is kilowatt hour. Now, this refers to the capacity or the size of the battery. Uh, for example, this guy, it's a 4.8 kilowatt hour. That's the size of the battery uh, or the capacity rather. And typically we have a thing called depth of discharge as well. So the two kind of come hand in hand because you're going to have a 4.8, but there's going to be a depth of discharge. Now what that essentially means is how much usable space you, you have for the battery. So if we go into the lead acid battery, it's 50%, pretty much, well, actually all lead acid batteries are 50% usable. With this one, this is 80%. So 80% is usable. Now you can work out the, um, the amount that is, I think it works at around 3.9, uh, two kilowatt hours available space. You can also have 100% DOD, but just be aware that you have to look at the cycles as well, because uh, a lot of manufacturers base the DOD on 6,000 cycles. So for example, if you look at another battery and it's 100% DOD and you think, wow, this is amazing, but it could only be 4,000 cycles. Now, just to give you a rough idea on cycles, uh, the way that you measure a cycle is you would use the whole battery, and you would charge it all the way up again. And that's one cycle. To know how long your battery will last you, uh, you can calculate this by uh, how many cycles you know, you're gonna be using a day. For example, one cycle, if you use one cycle a day, then that's 6,000 days. 6,000 days is around 16.4 years. And so if you use half those number of cycles, or so half a cycle a day, then it's gonna last you a whopping 32 years. 
Okay, so now we've covered uh, DOD, depth of discharge, and cycles. The next thing we want to understand is your charge and discharge currents. Now, this is normally represented in amp hours, and this is quite important to understand how much your how much you can handle when you're charging it and how much you can handle when you're discharging it. Why is this important? Well, the higher the discharge rate, the more the battery can handle. So to give you a real world example, if you have a kettle and your battery isn't capable of discharging that amount of power in one go, what will happen is that the uh, system will trip. So having a higher discharge rate makes all the difference in your system. The unit of measurement uh, we use when we talk about the discharge rate of a battery as we call this C rating. Now with a, a battery like this one, uh, it's the 4.8 kilowatt hour battery, it can discharge the same capacity. So it can discharge 4.8, we call this a 1C. A standard assumption is if it's not marketed as a 1C, then it would be a 0.5C, which would be half the capacity of the battery. Okay, so that is discharging. What about charging? So the benefit of having something like a 1C is that you can charge a lot faster. Now this is perfect for when you have a limited time to charge your battery during the day. So now we've covered the key bits of information. Um, there are other bits of data that you can see in the data sheets, uh, such as dimensions and things like that. But this, this is truly the bread and butter of what you need to know. Now we've covered what you will see in the data sheet. Uh, let's move on to the next thing, which is the battery and inverter communication. Now, this is quite an important uh, thing to have when you have comms, as they call it, uh, with your battery and your inverter. It allows you to monitor the uh, charge and discharge of your battery, as well as the other items. The inverter having comms with your battery uh, will take the effort out of all of these things. If you think about your inverter as being the sergeant and your battery being the soldier, them having a communication link between them uh, helps the whole process to be more accurate. So this is handled all through the BMS, the battery management system that we mentioned earlier. Uh, just make sure that whoever you're buying your product from, that the two can communicate. Essentially, you can either ask the manufacturer themselves, but your supplier should have this information. The market is changing rapidly and battery sizes are getting bigger and cheaper. So at the time of making this video, uh, the typical sizes that you get are 2.4, a 3.5 or 6, a 4.8 kilowatt like this one. And you do get bigger sizes, which I'm seeing um, coming into the market, like a five kilowatt and a six kilowatt. And the larger battery banks are either made up of the smaller ones um, connected together, or they're completely custom. The most common options on the market are either gonna be in a rack mounted or a wall mounted option. Um, we go through this in another video. If you wanna check that video out, you can click the link above. And lastly, a couple of tips that I can recommend. Uh, make sure that you're buying from a reputable manufacturer. Make sure that if you're gonna be expanding later, that the, the manufacturer has been around for a while, because if you need to buy another one of them, you know, you obviously wanna buy off the same manufacturer. Check if the batteries are not second life. Um, what this essentially means is that they have been refurbished. Uh, this is a good budget option for some but they're usually uh, half the lifespan of a new battery. You should be getting a 10-year warranty with each battery, sometimes on registration, but if they haven't got a 10-year warranty, I would be asking the reason why. And lastly, remember, rather pay for quality batteries instead of cheap ones, because as they say, cheap can be expensive. Okay, guys, that about wraps it up. Now, if you want to dig a little deeper, we do have an article on our website, which I'll leave in the description below. If you have any questions about buying lithium ion batteries, please ask the questions in the comments. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Good luck with your shopping and I'll see you in the next video. And essentially they've kicked, they kicked, I don't know why I've got this line in here. Can discharge. I mean, if you think about your, <laughs> in my other video, which you can see up in the link below. The link below. I know. <laughs> Thank you for watching.